So, let's start off by saying that yes, this is a real bummer, not only because uh, what I was working on actually turned out pretty good, but I also bricked a perfectly good GPU. The worst part though is it can't even be like, uh, oops, I just made like a mistake and that's why it's broken. Because honestly, the reason my GPU is now doorstop is due to my own incompetence. But before we get into how dumb I am, let's talk about the project because although I was unable to test it in the end, I don't really have any doubts that it would have performed just as good as I was hoping, maybe, maybe even a little better. But the idea for the project came from you guys. Um, a few of you had commented on some of my older videos that I should make a custom GPU shroud, which I thought was a really good idea. So if you have any more awesome ideas like that, make sure you drop me a comment down below because I'm always looking and you guys have come up with some pretty good stuff in the past. Now, initially I thought I would just take my old 580 and make a make a shroud around it, but let's be honest, the 580 is so old, nobody really cares about it. Then one day I was just gaming and I was like, Jesus, my GPU is loud. The problem is, is that I have one of those super up close to the glass vertical mounts in my case. So that really restricts the airflow, makes my card run a little hotter which means the fans are always running full speed. Now I wasn't seeing any performance drops, but it's loud. I don't know if you can hear, but yeah, I've been, I played basically one game of Modern Warfare here and we're running 80 degrees, solid. Um, frame rates are good, but it's just really loud. So we gotta fix it. Now initially my first thought was like, I should just water cool it, I got a custom loop anyway, but I couldn't bring myself to buy a water block for an outdated 1080. And then I remember what you guys had recommended and I was like, yes, let's turn this 1080 into a blower card. Like who does that? Everybody hates blower cards. Let's turn it into one. Initially I wanted the design to work kind of like a normal blower card. I would blow air from the back and then kind of exhaust it out the side of the case. But after I took a look at how the fins were laid out, it was pretty obvious that this was not gonna work how I wanted it to. All the vertical fins like run vertically, so I decided I would design it so cool air was drawn in from the bottom and then exhausted out the top. Hot air also rises, so that was gonna be in my favor. And after a few revisions, I ended up with this. GTX 1080 for the win blower card. On the bottom is two intakes for the two banks of cooling fins, driving the airflow are five Noctua A4 X20 cooling fans, an acrylic viewing window for that all important RGB, and for good measure, a racing stripe. Well, well, it holds, it, it just holds the, the shroud together because my printer is only so big, so what was I gonna do? All in all, I, I really actually liked how it turned out. My printer did a pretty good job at you know, making everything, there's, I mean, there's a little bit of mess ups, but what do you expect from a $200 printer? This tape that holds the two sections together doesn't actually look too bad. I use some foil tape, so it has a nice shine. It kind of ties together with the IO shield here. Everything kind of looks clean. After I had everything put together, I had one more, maybe one of the most important things based on who you ask. I had to hook up the RGB. And this is where things went south. Now I could have, now I have plenty of RGB strips. I could have just like sucked one in there, plugged it in my motherboard, called it a day. But I decided um, I was gonna make things more complicated. I wanted to use the RGB header on the graphics card, but I didn't, this is another dumb thing. I didn't want to cut the cable or the connector from the RGB lights on the stock shroud. So I decided um, I was gonna just pull the pins out of my RGB connector. So I pulled all the pins out and I just stuck them into where they should go on the header. It was, I mean, everything was marked. I knew what was 12 volts. I knew what was RGB. It's, it was an all right idea. But uh, after I, I, I literally, I put it in there, I looked at it and I was like, you're an idiot. That's gonna short out like immediately. All the, all the contacts were pretty much touching, but 
uh, I still went forward with it. And I'm not joking. I literally looked at it and said out loud, that is going to short. This is not going to work. You should probably just take the extra second and cut the connector and solder a new plug in there. But I said, nay, and I plugged it in, heard a popping sound. And of course you can probably guess it never worked again. Now, have you ever done anything so dumb that you're not even mad at, at yourself? You're basically like, what, what, did, what did you expect to happen? So yeah, the card was super loud and it gamed around 82 degrees Celsius, but, and I mean, now it is super quiet and temperatures are room temperatures, but it uh, doesn't game at all. So it's hard to call that a win. Now for the, the silver lining, I guess you could call it, because I bricked this GPU, I basically forced myself to have to upgrade something that I kind of been holding off on for a while. I mean, my 1080 was working fine and I've kind of, I kind of space out my upgrades. I had a 580 for the longest time. I held out till the 1080 come up and I really wanted to see what AMD was going to do before I decided to pull the trigger on a new GPU. But, uh, given my circumstance, I made a trip Sunday to Micro Center and got myself an RTX 2080 Ti, which was good because it's one of the best. Okay. It's the best other than the Titan series GPU out right now. And it also came with Call of Duty, which I actually been playing the beta and kind of enjoyed it. And then to avoid the fan problem, I decided I was going to get a water block, something I could have done at the beginning and save myself a lot of hassle. And instead of just going with an EK block, I decided to get the Corsair XG7 water block. Just came out and I, at first, was a little bit on the fence, but I said, what the heck, let's, let's try it out. Performance-wise, the 2080 Ti is on another level, but let's be honest, we all expected that. And so, I mean, I expected it. It's 2080 Ti versus 1080. Not really a contest. What I found really surprising though is how much I liked the XG7 water block. Like I said, initially when it released, I was kind of on the fence if I liked how it looked or not, but after getting my hands on it, it, it looks a lot better than I initially thought. The aluminum housing looks clean and industrial. The water block is all nickel plated copper, so you don't have to worry about any corrosion issues, obviously. And the flow indicator, it seems like a no brainer that every block should have one of those in there. It's just like a good reminder that, hey, yeah, things are working. Installation was really simple compared to what I thought it might be. There was already thermal compound applied. The instructions made sense. Um, thermal pads were already on there. So I said before that my 1080 was running about 82 degrees in game. This one on the water block runs about 50 to 57 degrees. And that's in game on a loop with my i7 7700K at five gigahertz. And it's only being cooled by a 240 radiator. So I was really surprised that it was able to keep reasonably cool temperatures for I mean, I played all last night with it, never had an issue. And now my CPU does run a little hotter because it's sharing a loop now with the GPU, but I mean, it's right around the 65 degree mark. Everything looks pretty good. So yeah, I guess in the end, I did get a quieter, cooler running system with better performance, but um, not really what I was going for. I mean, I'm happy with the 2080 Ti. I think it's gonna be pretty future proof. I shouldn't have to upgrade for quite a while, but I didn't have to take the hard route, I guess. And I wish I had the 1080 still to kind of use on the test bench or maybe build like a, another system or something. I don't know. Wish it wasn't a doorstop, but I guess we'll just look at it now, I guess. My only, I guess the big takeaway from this is don't be stupid. If you're looking at something and you're like, that is not gonna work. Don't be like, bah. fix it. Don't take the shortcut unless you want a cool centerpiece. But you know, hey. If you got an EVGA 1080 or 1070, and I even think the EVGA 1066 gig might work. I think it has the same shroud. Um, if you want to print this cooler out and give it a shot and see if the temperatures actually did work, I did make an account on Thingiverse, I believe it's called, that I will link down below where you can find all the goofy models that I'm going to I'm gonna start sharing them on that site. So if you want this, you can go download it, print it out, mess around with it. Um, I would forego doing any janky RGB stuff like myself. Uh, but go ahead, go check it out. That's where we'll be posting all my random stuff. And remember, if it ain't broke, well, fix it till it is. And given this debacle, I don't think that's ever been more true. So 